Do you want to get a software engineering internship at Facebook or Google? I'm going to show you exactly how to get one. Hey all, welcome back to my channel where I talk about success, productivity, and lifestyle. Today, I'm going to be telling you exactly how to get a software engineering internship, whether it be your first internship or not. I'm going to share the four biggest mistakes that I made and how you can avoid them. So keep watching. So first, I'm going to talk about the biggest mistakes I made. The first mistake I made was to not apply early enough. The second biggest mistake I made was not using my network and not trying to grow it. The third mistake I made was to not prepare well enough for technical interviews. And my fourth mistake was not doing any side projects. So first on the topic of starting early, I would recommend starting as soon as possible in August or early September, since that's when the recruiting season really starts kicking off for software engineering. Additionally, a lot of the big companies end their recruiting by November and December, so you definitely want to be one of the first people to apply since a lot of them accept interns on a rolling basis. So this means you actually want to do a little bit of preparation before the recruiting cycle even starts. You'll need to know the basics of coding if you have no experience. So free CodeCamp and Codecademy are really great resources if you're just starting out, and I'll link them down below. On these websites, you can choose to complete modules in different areas such as web programming, iOS or Android app development, and backend development. So you can select which area you want to learn more about depending on which type of software engineering role you want to apply to. So moving on to my second mistake of not using my connections and not trying to grow my connections, I would highly recommend to reach out to four different groups of people in your network. So the first group is alumni who work at the company that you want to work at. The second group are friends and classmates who interned at that company previously. Third group is your professors. And the fourth group are friends of friends who have interned or worked at that company. As a college student, I felt like I didn't really have any connections and it seemed like only something that working people had, but that was completely wrong. Firstly, I knew a few alumni at the companies that I wanted to work at. And secondly, I realized the power of LinkedIn that could help me expand my connections greatly. My first step in using my connections was to reach out to people I already knew who were working as software engineers in the companies I was interested in. I usually reached out to them by email and asked if they have 15 minutes to chat about their work. It's important that you limit the call to 15 or 20 minutes because it doesn't seem like that big of an ask and so people will be more willing to accept. It's also important that you don't lead by asking them to help you get a job. People usually are a little hesitant to help people they don't know and you don't want to come off the wrong way. Approaching them in that way is likely to make them feel uncomfortable. If the people you're reaching out to already know you, it may be different, but if you don't know them, then I'll get into what exactly you should say in that call later. My second step was to go on LinkedIn. Make sure you fill out your LinkedIn profile with as much information as you can and treat it as if it were a second resume. I then began the process of reaching out to people that I didn't know at all. So there were four main steps to this. So the first step was to go to the LinkedIn page of a company I was interested in working at and click on the link to see all the employees of that company on LinkedIn. The second step is to scroll down to the schools filter and type in your university name and you'll get a list of university alumni who work at the company you're interested in. And people you have something in common with, such as a school, are much more likely to be willing to help you and take time out of their day to talk with you. So third, hit connect and then add a note and ask them to chat on the phone. So a typical note can look something like this. So in the note, you want to explain both why you're contacting them and your small ask, which is a 15 minute phone call in just a few sentences. You want to keep it short, friendly, and to the point. And LinkedIn also doesn't let you go over 300 characters anyway. So the fourth step is to wait for them to get back to you. Many people never get back to you, but some will respond immediately and some will respond within a few days. I usually reached out to around five people per week on LinkedIn, since a decent amount of people don't regularly check their LinkedIn messages. If you see someone on LinkedIn that you're connected to with a second degree connection, you can ask your friend for a mutual introduction. I found these calls to be some of the most helpful things I did during my internship search. They helped me figure out what kind of company I wanted to work for, how to prepare for the technical interview, and what areas of software engineering I wanted to pursue further. 
It can be kind of hard to know exactly what to ask, so I compiled a list of questions that I asked during these interviews. So some of the questions you can ask are, what is the culture like at this company? Is there an emphasis on work-life balance? How often do people hang out outside of work? What's the culture transparency like? What they enjoy about working at the company? If you're a female, you can ask about what it's like to be a female engineer at the company, whether it's easy to switch teams and try new things, what their team specifically is working on, and also their job journey through recruiting and ending up at that company. So questions like these can be great even if you're not looking for a job. They can help you learn more about the industry and particular niches that you could be potentially interested in in the future. But if you are looking for an internship, there is one question I asked during every interview that was especially helpful. And the question is, how can I stand out in the intern application process for this company? This question is great because the person you're on the phone with will give you advice on how to land an internship there and potentially even refer you to a recruiter. So moving on to the third question, which was not preparing enough for the technical interviews, I have a few of the most common things you should keep in mind when going into the technical interview. So first, before you even get into the technical interview, you're going to have a resume screen and some behavioral questions about your resume. So keep your resume to one page and don't use any fancy fonts or styling. Many companies will actually just take your resume and scrape it for the text without having a human read it. So definitely use keywords that you find in the job description as your action items or action words in your resume. You also want to make sure your language is action oriented. So this really means that you should begin with the metric or objective that you've approved and then follow that with the adjective instead of the other way around, which is what most resumes use. For example, you can say, I improved sales by 150% by implementing a pipeline. Also make sure everything on your resume can be backed up in an interview. If you're only starting to learn a coding language, don't say you're an expert in it because people will attach your lies during the interview. So after your resume screen, you'll probably be sent a coding challenge, which is very common for companies, especially big tech companies. So coding challenges are a hacker rank style test where you'll usually have an hour to 90 minutes to solve two to three questions. And these are usually pre-screenings for a phone interview. To practice for these, you can do hacker rank style problems on a time limit to simulate doing a test. Personally, I found that Python is a great language for programming interviews because it's high level, you don't need to implement any data structures, and it's very fast to write and debug in. Some of the most useful things to know about in Python for a coding interview are default dict, sorting with lambda functions, string splitting, reversing, and built-in data types. Now, once you make it to the technical interview, you want it to be more conversational. So ask questions during your technical interview. This shows that you're interested in the company as well as what they're doing. Additionally, try to figure out what area of computer science you're really interested in, whether that be web development, app development, or backend. I was asked this question in nearly every interview, so definitely have an answer prepared. Now, the first round of a technical interview usually consists of two algorithm questions of an easy to medium level. And usually second round interviews or final round interviews will have one to two questions of a medium level. And there really aren't any workarounds to the technical interviews, so you just need to practice. LeetCode is a good website that offers many algorithm practice questions, and you can sort by the type of question and the popularity. When I was just starting out, I would do around two to three hours of LeetCode a day. And in the first few weeks, it was really hard. I couldn't even solve some of the easy questions without looking at the solutions. But it's important not to spend too long on a single problem. So spend maybe 10 to 15 minutes on an easy problem and 15 to 20 minutes on a medium. It's okay if you can't solve the problems at first. So look at the solutions and discussions and figure out what the approach is to the problem. Then you can come back to the question in a week and try it again. Finally, when you're in a technical interview, lay out your thought process and keep talking through it. This makes a huge difference in interviews because then your interviewer can follow your thought process and guide you back on track if you're going down a wrong solution. So in addition to the coding algorithm questions, you also might be asked some technical conceptual questions. So here are some of the most common conceptual questions I've been asked. So first, I've always been asked what the definition of inheritance is. So both for phone and in person, I found that this is the easiest to elaborate by first saying the definition and then giving an example. 
and similarly with the definition of polymorphism. You also want to know some keyword questions. So if you're interviewing in a specific language, you may be asked about what a certain term means. So for example, for C++, you might be asked what a struct is, or if you're interviewing in C-sharp, you might be asked what protected means. Additionally, you might be asked some kind of database question, disadvantages of using certain kind of databases. And usually you'll also be asked some kind of data structure question, not an algorithm question, but a trade-off question, for example, like why would you use an array over a linked list? Or when would you use a hash table? So the fourth mistake I made was not doing side projects. So in the past, most big tech companies were focused on infrastructure and building out their product pipelines. But now that a lot of tech companies have perfected that, they're really looking for product engineers. According to a study done by Triplebyte, the most in-demand engineers across a few of the top well-funded companies were product engineers. So this means that your portfolio has never been more important. In many cases, you can no longer count on solely your GPA in your school to get you an interview. You need to show that you're the type of engineer who's sensitive to the needs of the user, who can make good product decisions, and who has a track record of finishing and following through with projects. So if you're just starting out, then Make School and Treehouse have some really good intro classes that can help you build projects for free. You also want to put your projects on GitHub. So once you start doing your projects, get on GitHub as soon as possible and upload all of your projects. Once your projects are on GitHub, spend 15 minutes a day to work on your code and push it to GitHub. This is important because GitHub publicly displays your longest streaks of coding. So you want to make sure that streak is as long and impressive as possible. It's also a good idea to look for open source projects and check the issues page and see whether or not you can contribute to those. The more open source projects you contribute to, the more valuable you'll seem to employers. So if you learn from my mistakes and start applying early, use and grow your network, prepare for your technical interviews, and do your side projects, then you're gonna be way more likely to land your dream internship at Facebook, Google, or whatever other company you're looking at. So if you found this helpful, please leave a like and comment and tell me what topics you're interested in learning more about. Please subscribe because I'll be uploading videos weekly about networking, productivity, success, and internships. As always, have a great day and thanks for watching.